Hello, and welcome to another Mr. Beatabyte video. And uh, this one's a little bit different insofar as we're going to be looking at a Sony C40. Um, pretty much the same as the C20, which has no remote control. A C30, which has a remote control. And then the C40 has um, linear stereo so um it's not hi-fi stereo it's just linear stereo it's um sort of the, the the next machine on from the c9 um but without the pcm switched for the uh, dropout uh, compensator um for pcm use uh so yeah it's, it's a great machine it's really nice um fairly reliable um, as these machines go and today's sort of well they're old aren't they so uh yeah let's have a look see what we can do with it so i bought this machine from a charity and uh basically it's untested other than it powers on and uh, i did sort of wonder what i was kind of get myself into it looked really tidy so uh you know it it has every chance of being good except looking at it there is a problem uh you can see here this is just floating about and if we uh just wind this on So you can see oh, I've gone too far. Sorry. Yeah. So here you can see the part that this you can see in there there's a little t bit of plastic that t section locks into this bit of plastic now this bit of plastic half of this assembly so you can see on the the right side here um where it's intact and there should be a corresponding bit of plastic on this side on the left side and that's broken off and I'm, I'm seeing this more and more to be honest um, where the plastic just gives way and this side is actually more important because this rail here helps keep that T section of plastic located. So, um, yeah, <laughs> obviously a bit of a problem. So the loading ring will have to be changed. Um, I do have a C30 deck here, um, which is going to be good for a donor for the loading ring. It's essentially the same loading ring. You can see it there. Where it's clipped in so basically i'll be changing the whole loading ring including this section and uh it's a big job it really is it's basically all of this plastic off um the audio or the ace ace head basically ace heads um need to come off and um yeah it's it's <laughs> not a, not an easy job um i have done this before in another video but i will be doing it again in this video just because it's part of getting this machine up and running um otherwise it's pretty good uh it's been well stored uh very dusty 
So all that dust needs to come out and we'll be doing the um, capacitors and the power supply, which I probably won't show in this video, um, just because I've done it numerous times. And uh, then we'll run through some tests, check it out. Um, obviously all the usual things that you do with these machines, clean the glue off the Hall effect sensor, uh, give it a grease. The spools are good and solid, but we'll drop the the real tables um, and uh, check that the plastic is is pretty solid. Um, then we use the Sony case to check alignment um, and back tension, and then we'll be good to go. So. I suppose let's crack on.
Okay, so it's all done, and uh, it's about an hour's worth of work, and um, let's just wind this on while I sort of talk through it all. So yeah, so we've used the C9 um, loading ring, uh, a few little issues, um, sort of taking it apart, one lug broke off, which was down here. Uh, on this inner, so you've got an inner and an outer um, assembly, and it it just would not come free, and it cracked, and it's not really surprising the plastic is starting to show its age. Um, there's also a bit of a, a mark here. Um, I don't think I did it, um, but I might may well have. But I did notice that. It, when I was um, using the, the, the old ring, there was some resistance around here, like this was bent. So um, I had to spare one of these, so I've put that on. So it's, it's uniform all the way around. So you can see that's, that's working pretty well. Um, what else happened? I've taken the upper drum off. I didn't show that on the, um, the video section where I'm taking all this apart. I've taken this off and given it a good clean. Um, I've aligned these as well, which I've done off, off camera. Um, this has all been lubricated. Everything else has been lubricated as I've gone through. And tiny bits of silicon grease, just enough to, to get them free. Uh, silicon grease does creep. You have to be a bit careful of but it is really really good especially with plastic against metal um i've realigned the um unlace uh, micro switch so that's fine and um the gear a common issue on these um was actually starting to crack so i put a another one on um one of the white gears um uh, which doesn't retain the, the the gear that goes butts up against it but it, it's fine it works really well and um i've uh, detailed them in another video so that's good and uh yeah so i'm i'm pretty pleased with this um the resistance on the gears are or is uh, equal right the way through the loading sequence, which is always good. It shows there's nothing that's sort of um, getting in the way or misaligned. Um, I have also cleaned the solenoid as well um, and just greased that up a little bit. But I'm really, really pleased with that. That's a really good job. Um, like I say, it takes about an hour. Obviously, I have to align the um, audio head and the arrays head, but I've got it somewhere near where it was. So hopefully, that that won't be too big a uh, too big a job. So um, I have actually. cleaned up the power supply, um, but in the meantime, we're going to look at, um, oh, metal on my screwdriver, um, we're going to look at the uh, spool reel table and just see what has actually broken on there. Um, like I said earlier, there are problems with it insofar as it looks like, yeah, as you can see, it's floating about. So let's take out these two screws, and I reckon we don't have to take out the other two screws because it's because uh, they're completely free. But we'll see. Dust. 
put this this through a bit more. Very dusty machine, this one. Um, not actually, yeah, you can see that's just completely free. Mm. Yeah, you can see there the, um, or maybe you can't, <laughs> but uh, you can see there that this should be down here and this here. So uh, what I need to do is get your screws out and super glue it and then leave it overnight just to, um, easier said than done, just to properly set, get nice and hardened. And then we can move on. Uh, I will clean up the glue off the um, Hall Effect, which can have mixed results sometimes. Doing it saves it. Sometimes it just tips it over the edge. It really depends just how much it's actually rotted into the legs of the um, Hall Effect, the glue. Um, it does seem to have some sort of acidity to it, which just kills the Hall Effect. Um, so looking at the actual um, unit itself, it's, um, let me just put a light on, let's get some more light. Um, against. Yeah, that helps a bit. So, um, this is actually pretty good. The spools are good. Um, if you rock them sort of back and forwards this way, this gives you a good idea if the plastics that are actually holding the spools are bad. And these are good. Um, the um, idler, there's no bending going on, which is really encouraging. Let's just give that a wipe while I'm in here. Nice to make these things look nice. And um, let's just clean the surface that the back tension runs on. Back tension band. Back tension band looks good. Brakes look pretty good. It's nice. I'll just give that a clean with this cloth. I will give it a proper clean with some isopropyl. But uh, it's just too good an opportunity to miss. <laughs> just to give that a good clean. Solenoid's good. All the rest of the arms are good. So, yeah, not too bad. It's just literally those two um, portions. See there, a bit of plastic that's broken off. So this is what happens. It, metal and plastic don't mix. The metal expands, contracts. The plastic becomes brittle and it breaks. So, certainly not uncommon. Um, getting more and more of an issue with these, um, with these Sonys. But they are worth saving because they're lovely machines. So um, let's get gluing. Uh, so first of all, we need to just make sure we're happy where these go. Um, It's sort of not right, does it? But it suggests. Oh no, that's that goes there. And then this, this goes here. That makes sense. 
There we go. I don't know how I mix those up. Well. So I suppose we better. Oh gosh, that's tight. <laughs> so I suppose we better get glowing. Arguably, I've put a bit too much glue on there, but it's fine. Now we want to get the glue into the um, gap as well, because that really does help add some extra mechanical strength. That a few seconds. It's actually quite crazy that I, I I'm repairing this pretty much blind. I have no idea what this machine is actually like, but. Uh, you know, it's it's half the fun, and ultimately I can get these machines going. I I know them pretty well now, even though it doesn't look like it sometimes. But uh, you know, I, I they are complex, and um, they are great machines. I mean, they're so worth saving, and. Uh, you know, sometimes I have people say it's old and it's, you know, it's, it's too much wrong with it. And that's sort of taking maybe a little bit of a, a view of a TV and video engineer of the time, um, which of course I was. But actually being a TV and video engineer is quite different to actually storing these things and getting these things going because a TV and video engineer is just literally fixing a fault. What I'm doing is I'm trying to make them reliable. So I'm going through all the faults that I know these machines get and then um, fixing them even if it doesn't need fixing. Uh, which invariably <laughs> they actually do need fixing. But um, going way back when I started doing this um, again, um, I would fix a fault, do a bit of a clean up, do a, a service, and um, test them. And invariably they would fail with um, one of the stock faults, one of the faults that I fix even if it's not faulty. Uh, these machines are often sort of left for 20 years or more even, um, just in lofts and whatever, and uh, they, they do suffer, bless them, and they will exhibit those faults and they will do it sooner rather than later. So it's one of those things, you know, if, if you buy a machine that is sort of, it looks great, um, but it's literally an attic find, or it's been stored, or whatever, on eBay. And somebody says, oh, you know, it's, it's, I would see machines selling for £300, and it's, it's worth that. It's just like, no, no, it's not. Because you're going to spend, uh, if, if you can't fix it yourself, which I'm hoping these videos do help you do, if you don't fix it yourself, you're going to be spending a huge amount of money getting it going on top of what you've paid. And yet you could buy a reconditioned, a decent reconditioned machine from one of the German sellers or UK sellers where they do actually do a proper job. <laughs> and, 
yeah, you have much more chance of it being a working machine and giving you some decent service than buying a machine that's just working out of a loft and uh, yeah, keeping your fingers crossed that it keeps going because it won't. Um, these machines do fail after a few hours use, having not been used for decades. So just, just bear that in mind uh, when you're buying stuff. Uh, I need to do the toothbrush thing, don't I? Which is always a fun thing. A bit of isopop ale and... Always feels wrong doing this. It probably is. <laughs> I don't know. But it does seem to clean up the whole effect. Quite nicely. Um, possibly. Let's have a pop and look at it. Oh gosh, yeah. It's got lots of glue on it, this one. It's really quite bad. Might be one that actually needs to be changed because it's really full of glue. Um, so it probably will go bad. It's actually cleaning up okay. I quite like having that much alcohol around the, uh, the rest of it, but oh, that's pretty clean. Oh, lovely. Bit of persistence pays off. Some rubbish down there. I can actually smell the glue, to be fair, I can smell it dissolving. Probably isn't very good for me. <laughs> Super. That's really good. Use my grubby cloth on this because that's enough. It will do the do the job. Just trying to get it dry. Got a bit of a squiggle going on there with the lead. That's fine. Yeah, the lead is just slightly wonky. That doesn't matter as long as it's clean. And obviously the, the leads aren't touching so not I'm happy so let's get that bit of glue out there so that's it so we're good um, that is one clean Hall effect sensor so oh these are actually looking pretty solid I'll get that clean 
what I will do, let's put a tiny bit of Silicon Grease in for loading mechanism gears. It's plentiful that makes a huge difference to their reliability. Um, it does sort of keep the plastic sort of from decomposing as well. Slows that, that process down, which is what you want. I mean, we're trying to preserve these machines for as long as we can. And uh, yeah, so, excellente. So, drop this down, I know I was going to set up this, going to leave this 24 hours, but, well, overnight. But what I'm going to do is just put those two down there, and put the right bit on, and screw down these front two, but not the bottom two. So not these two. And that one. Super. Oh gosh, it's come out of its it's come out of its clip. Spray that clipper so it doesn't keep trying to come off. Lovely. So that's, that's a pretty good job done. Um, so I guess the next thing is the power supply. So the power supply, uh, Giving it a dust, it was incredibly dusty. Maybe able to still see some dust there, but those cats are coming out anyway. Um, so I've given it a good clean. Um, I've changed the fuses, and uh, just because they do soft blow, um, it's like stress blowing. So it's not as a fault; they just blow. Um, from constant power up, power down type scenarios uh, with age. And uh, yeah, so we'll change the caps, uh, the common caps, these two, and I'll also change um, these two in here, two small ones, uh, yeah, two small ones. And uh, yeah, then we should be fairly close to getting this uh, machine working. Uh, we're not far off. It is a really nice machine, I have to say, even with all its problems. It, it's a good machine and uh, should really work well. Um, finding the head's good, but generally, I tend to find on Sony's, the heads aren't that bad. We will crack oh. on tomorrow. So the power supply is all done. Uh, changed quite a few capacitors actually in the end and majority did check either low or bad. Um, and uh, I did actually have a bit of a problem with the 2200 uh, microfarad capacitor as far as my replacement is just a lot taller. It's narrower but taller. Um, the negative side of it is ground anyway, so I wouldn't really worry too much about it uh, potentially touching the uh, the metal there. But I have put some 
a couple of bits of tape over the top just just for the sake of doing it really <laughs> um so uh well it's all good so let's turn it on and i'm going to be using the sony tv um there's actually cable in front of it as well which isn't helpful let's move that out of the way so let's see how we go So, yeah, don't mind the flicker because it's a CRT. It does, um, does sort of beat with the uh, refresh of the camera. Um, now, this tape is now a little bit damaged, <laughs> unfortunately, so it does jitter um, a little bit. Uh, I think the top edge has got slightly stretched or damaged at some point. Um, I've used this tape so much that I'm not really surprised. Um, so, I did some more sort of um, investigation and I lifted these boards up, this board, then there's the audio board beneath and then the servo board beneath that, servo and logic. Um, just to give them a clean out really, because uh, it was quite a dusty machine. So I went through them, went down, and I found that the logic servo board has actually got damaged in transits. Um, this board here, had a crack there, well, that's fine. I mean, in some ways I wouldn't even bother repairing it, but I have. But the Logic Servo board, there is quite a big crack. I don't, really, I don't think you can see it. It's, um, here, there. It's, uh, yeah, I don't think you can really see it. It's by that screw hole there. So you see the, where there's a screw coming through the, uh, assembly there can i get a bit more light uh, there you go you can just about see it so where there's a screw hole there right at the bottom there screw coming up through that bit of metal steel steel metal thing <laughs> um all around there is actually cracked now it doesn't appear to have gone through the print but I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to take it apart um, again. I'd actually put the bottom on it, of course. That's what I always say, isn't it? If I put it together, no doubt I'll have to take it apart again. Um, and uh, just investigate it, really. Um, I've had a look at the circuit diagram. What I've found with that is that if the, um, if the sound wasn't working properly, and uh, what was the other thing? Uh, one of the logic controls as well. I think for the clock, yeah, it's clock, clock timer. That would be because that part of the board is cracked. So it's not like it's affecting anything with the core functions like um, the tape functions or whatever. It's just literally, I mean, can I, I don't know what, what I have to do to test that. I think the clock has to be set and everything before I can try the timer. But, um, yeah. And clock. Let's get that ticking. Yeah, I'll probably have to set the timer then. Hmm. Uh, do. Yeah. If it's on, um, it's on AV. It doesn't look anyway. Yeah, if it's on AV, that's a bit odd, really. If it's on AV, you can't set the timer. So, let's set the timer. Day, program two. Um, do I set the Up there. And then, oh, so prog is actually prog. <laughs> it's, it's crazy, isn't it? I do all this work on these machines, and I've never set a timer on them. <laughs> um, so, yes, yeah, so let's do that and then off. Timer. 
timer set. And of course we've got two timers on these. So, um, and then see what happens. Yeah, it's let me do it. Okay, well that's good. Yeah, just really interesting that you can't actually record off an, off an AV. It's probably some really weird reason why. I mean, I guess you can do it for simulcast. Yeah, you can. But you can't do it for AV. I suppose, would there have been any need at the time? I suppose... Yeah, there wasn't really satellite or anything at that point, was there? So, yeah, probably it's some weird thing to do with copying tapes or whatever. I mean, I don't know why. But, uh, yeah, uh, interesting. Learn something new every day. Okay, so, um, got to the offending part of the board. And uh, as you can see from the bottom, there's very little damage, to be fair. It's, it's straight through the... Um, through the pretty sacrificial part of the board, uh, which is something that's only quite good at doing, actually giving quite a lot of uh, leeway around the screw holes. Um, it's partly for um, if you're running the machine with the boards loose, uh, just to reduce the risk of shorting something else. Um, but uh, yeah, that's I'm completely happy with that, to be fair. Uh, just looking on the camera. Is there a crack? No, there isn't. So the crack on the top, just slightly cracked here, pretty much. Um, like I say, all checks fine. And I have sealed it. Um, I've used glue. Um, just to add some mechanical strength to it, just in case. Just in case it does decide to start to travel. But, uh, no, I'm happy with that. I'm happy that that's a, a solid repair and uh, it's not going to give any problems. So, uh, get it back together, put it on the bench and let's give it a run. So that's it. I think we're about good to go. Uh, really, really pleased with how this machine eventually turned out. Obviously a huge amount of work, um, but always worth it. I mean, they're so, they're so rewarding when you get a machine that's pretty much unsavable, <laughs> or it would seem, up and running again. So really very pleased with this machine. And this one was particularly worth it. It's so clean and so nice. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll put a picture up for the thumbnail um, of the machine with its cover on. And uh, yeah, so um, interestingly, you may remember on the C9 I did a, a, a tidbit. Um, with the test signal switch that mutes the audio on AV out as well. Uh, so let's just uh, unmute that. I have to say the sound is very good, um, even though it is analog. Um, very, very pleased with the, the sound reproduction. I mean, C40 was a good machine for that, uh, to be fair. There's a little bit better audio. Um, so yeah, so let's flick the switch. So, test signals on, off. So, uh, yeah, but as you can see in here, it's working really well. So, with that in mind, thank you very much for watching. And uh, I hope you got something out of this video. A little bit of a flicker there, a bit of damage on the tape. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in another video. Oh, don't forget to subscribe as well. Really useful. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.